Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Fence uh, with Coach Rack, Chris, and Mike. We are back with another episode. Chris, what do we got today? So let's talk about tryouts. We talking about practice? Practice. Practice. Uh, we're talking about tryouts today and the goods and the bads, not only the goods and the bads, but what do you do if you get cut and where do you go from there? It's also Ghost Advanced launch week. It is Ghost Advanced. So the Ghost launch Advance week. is launching this week at Headbanger Sports. Today is uh, Prince Charming <laughs> Banana Land Sore Day. So he's going to uh, hopefully, he got his camera working after about a half hour of us watching him jiggle the cables around. And I think he really just had to turn the camera on. <laughs> yeah that's that's what it was we're talking about um you know what happens if you don't make your high school baseball team or you don't make the team and you know where do you go from here so rack have you ever had that been in that situation before i know my i i really actually have not never tried out for a team and not made the team i was cut from a slow pitch team before we started the season though no that's a story i'd like to hear so Jesse, he's just putting together this D team, and he's like, man, we're going to play. We're going to do this and that. He's like, I want you to play third. I want you to just kind of lead off, you know, just hit, get on base and be the good. And I'm like, you know, I don't really know if I can really commit to a slow pitch team right now, especially tournament team, driving around with everything. And then he got cut. Um, <laughs> and then, like, two days later, he's like, hey, I decided to go a different direction. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, man, you're good. Trust me, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Um, he asked me, he's like, hey, you want to come pitch? And I'm like, Sure, I'll come out there sometimes. Yeah. Never ask me again. I was like, All right. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not committing to softball anymore. Sorry. Um, so, you know, I think in high school, and not only just high school, but I think in all athletics at every age, you're, you're always going to have a, um, you know, the one kid that either I think has the ability, but probably doesn't show it at tryouts or hasn't really been given a fair opportunity to play. Um, whether it be political or personal or whatever it may be, I don't really know. Um, what is your thoughts? You know, what where do you go from here, right? Like once you get cut, you get that bad news. Obviously, it's heartbreak. It's you're upset at you know, did I do not? Did I not do enough in the off season? Did I um, you know just have a bad tryout? And then how do I prepare myself mentally to for what's to come? Um, you know, the focus of like if you really truly love the game and you want to be a part and play the sport but you get cut, does it crush you or does it make you better? And does it drive you to like kind of light a fire under your ass to say, Hey, I got to get this done. And I got to get this done. I start, got to start working a little bit harder. There's like two outcomes of that. Yeah. I think it's 50, 50 in my personal opinion. Yeah, like either uh, you're like whatever and you move on and do something else or it lights a fire in your ass and yeah. you turn into an animal. And then I it's, agree. That, it's the, uh, Hey, I'm going to prove you wrong. When I was actually in high school, uh, well, before I got to high school, so, you know, you guys know I was homeschooled for a while. Um, so I actually have kind of in some way experienced this. Um, my sophomore year of high school, um, again, homeschooled at this point, I'm looking for a place to play. And uh, my mom was like uh, calling around to local schools to see if I could like still be partially homeschooled but play for the team. Um and just kind of seeing what their requirements were. So there was this one school, they were a private school in our area. And uh, we like reached out to them and just were like, hey, like, would I be able to try out? Like, they were like, yeah, we do accept, you know, kids who are homeschooled to and allow them to play for the team. Uh, but there's just no way your son would be good enough to make the team. So really don't bother trying out. Um, and that, that's what they said. And I remember, like, all right, well, I guess, guess we're not trying out then. That was that. And then I ended up going to one of their rival schools, Arrowhead Christian. Um, and I'll tell you what, in four games against them, I hit three home runs. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Yes, you weren't. That guess topping you weren't good on the cake enough. dropped that mic a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So I have to ask because the celebration conversation that we had last year, like, uh, or last episode, like, did you, after you hit these home runs, did you celebrate on the way through just to kind of like, and rub it in a little bit or did you take it like a man and just run around the bases and say hey this is this is me no no we're uh I'll tell you, so the bananas um it strongly encourage you to uh celebrate and we actually practice our celebrations um you know because it's a whole a whole show so um yeah i i hit a home run i left the yard this weekend and uh i absolutely celebrated <laughs> and, and funny enough i had um I had 
stilts dakota stilts the guy who plays you know on stilts in front of me he had just gotten a single so he was on first base when i hit it so i ended up catching up to him while running around the bases and uh yeah it, it was it was it was a lot of fun definitely celebrated though without seeing it there's probably several cartwheels and flips involved just right of you to guess that my ankle uh is currently it's okay but i'm just taking it easy because i did one too many aerials and now my body's mad at me, but, um, but otherwise there would have been more flips for sure. Imagine rack hitting a home run and just cart- <laughs> cartwheeling the whole, all the bases the whole way around. That's what it's going to be. Prince Charming, where you jump on a horse that comes out the stables out of, oh, out of nowhere is, and like you ride it around the bases. That, that would be is, amazing. But it's got to be like a little pony. It would be even funnier if it my was my little, little pony, like the little pony, <laughs> and it's got to be purple. No, the crazy thing is that they would totally do that. That would get be you, awesome. They need to get you like the Fortnite llama. Yes. Like on a stick. Yeah. So after you hit a bomb, they can just come pass it to you. Then you can. Get- <laughs> <laughs> you were going into something. You you were you said something kind of previously right before you started talking about celebrations um, and getting cut. And I mean, obviously, we all kind of know kids that got cut, did good things with it. You know, went to the gym, worked out hard, got themselves better, came back and shoved it down. You know. The, the, you know, shoved everything into uh, kind of a ball and said, hey, this is actually who I am, right? Do um, you have any stories on that? you have any guys that, you know, went from being cut to making the pros or went from being cut to making D1 or playing college ball or whatever it may be? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I know I know guys who have been cut from their high school team who ended up playing in college. I know guys who are cut from your college team and ended up playing in pro ball. Um, I know guys cut from their high school team who ended up playing in pro ball. Um, and I would give examples, but there's actually just a lot of, a lot of examples. Um, I've seen it happen many times. And, um, another thing that I've really seen too, is you cannot tell where a player is going to be development wise. Um, like at at any point in time, like there, there've been times where I've seen guys, I mean, even myself as a junior in high school, um, you know, didn't necessarily seem very projectable, um, you know, size wise or strength. Um, and some players are just early, early bloomers. Some are late bloomers and there's no way of knowing that as a coach. And so for what I've always said is baseball is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And there's times where maybe you lose the sprint. Um, but as long as you keep running, you'll end up being ahead of most people because, one way or another, most people end up quitting long before seeing their true potential in this game. And the reason being is because a lot of times you'll hit those roadblocks along the way. Like for instance, for me, like I was a shorter kid, most of my life growing up, it would have been very easy for me at say 13 to be like, okay, I'm undersized. I'm simply not going to make it very far in this game. I should just give up. Um, in reality, uh, if I just, you know, kept doing what I ended up doing and just kept working at it, kept working at it, see where it takes me. Um, you know, I ended up actually getting pretty good at the game. So um, that's where, yeah, my encouragement to kids, especially, especially if, you know, I, I think once you're like, you know, maybe 19, 20 years old, you're in junior college and the game's kind of telling you to hang them up and, you know, you're not really getting an opportunity anywhere and there's no tools that you have that seem projectable enough, then yeah, maybe like, maybe consider moving on and, and, you know, checking it out. But if you're, still in high school at all. I mean, even if you're a senior and you're not, you don't have any offers to play anywhere um, and you're not even playing on your high school team, but you really love it and you want to work hard. Like there's probably a spot at some junior college for you. And I've seen stories of guys who bloom late and just make it work. Yeah. I mean, what was the dude's name that got his first start in MLB at like 36, 37? Oh yeah. Uh, Drew, Drew Maggi. It came out and started roping the ball, started hitting that good played really well, but never gave up on his dreams kind of thing. And, and, you know, I, I say as a coach, um, from a coaching perspective and from a dad's perspective, um, you know, you never want to see a kid quit early, especially at the younger age. Um, you know, if you make a, you know, Landon at one point in time, I think he was seven or eight sat inside played Fortnite all winter long, you know, he was undersized. He was a small kid. He really didn't have the skills that, um, I think he could compete on any team, but it was his first time kind of being cut. And all that did was like hype him and get him to the point where he was like, you know what, next year I will not be cut, you know? And that team ended up going like one in 30, um, as an AU team, AU, right? This is what we're talking about right now. 
um, you know, being cut from an 8U team, which really is kind of that age group where you should be having a good time. You should be worried more about having fun on the field than kind of, you know, making a team or not making a team and being, you know, committed to that squad or whatever. Um, you know, and I, I hope that any kid that either didn't get an opportunity to play on their high school team this spring, um, and I, I know we're really early on this because only in Florida pretty much is this happening, I guess, and Cali and all that stuff. Cal- California too, yeah. You know, I hope you guys take it as um, <laughs> this is an opportunity to get more reps, get in the gym, eat healthier, change your lifestyle. You know, may, if you really want to play baseball and you're cut from your squad, your life isn't over. It may feel like that right now. Um, and it's going to be tough, I'm sure, on you and your family for a little while. Um, but hopefully in the end, it it turns a character kind of, uh, you know, that switch. And it's like, hey, I'm going to bust my ass and I'm going to prove you wrong. And it, And if it doesn't, then I think the game isn't for you. Right. Like if they, if you get cut from a baseball team, especially uh, a high school squad and you don't work your ass off to get back, if you have the ability to have one or two more years, then this game isn't for you. There's still summer baseball. You know, you can play on a summer team. You can play little league, junior seniors. Um, you know, you can, can constantly get those reps and get yourself in the gym and work harder, you know, wake up in the morning, eat right. Like if, listen, if you're not making a squad, there's a reason it may not be the right reason. Um, but make it to the point where they don't have an opportunity to cut you go out there at that tryout next year and, and kill it. Like focus on, you know, we've talked about it on previous podcasts and rack, you actually put a really good video together for like the practice plan and the trial plan. Like we all know what goes into a pro day workout now for the most part, if you do play baseball and if you don't, there's videos that we can add to uh, the description that way they can go out there and develop their kid and give them the right thing. I mean, most of the time it's going to be, you know, stretching, warming up. If you're out there warming up at, at tryouts and you're not hitting that guy in the chest every single time, then you need to focus on hitting them in the chest. Focus on your 90 or your 60. You know, get that t- that time up. Like, start working on your speed. You know, there's weighted vests that you can run with. There's endurance and agility drills that you can do to get that time up. You're going to do outfield, right? You're going to throw from the outfield to your cuts. Hit your cuts, right? Like, they want to see you actually hit a cut rather than throw it all the way through. You're going to have an opportunity at the end to go through your cut and let that arm shine, let that arm shine. You know, do infield, outfield, hitting. Like, you're going to hit off of a tee or you're going to hit from an L screen in front of you. So focus on all the things that you do in that tryout to get yourself prepared for tryout day. Like, you should never be pressing yourself or thinking about other players around you. Worry about yourself. Worry about what you can do to better yourself and focus on the things that actually matter. Um, You know, you could work all season long uh, or off season long on getting big and strong, but if you're not working on your agility to throw – and you don't have your arm loosened up by tryout date, then you're going to look like you're, you're, you know, you're tight. So, I mean, what are the things that we all did to prepare for trials? Like, what did you guys do as like, as coming up with the tryout, whether it be baseball, football, you know, gymnastics, whatever it is, there's always a preparation period going up to that time and getting your mind and your body right. So what did you guys do, you know, in preparation for that? And I'll give you my kind of thing after you guys give me yours. Just now, like before going to the bananas tryout, that was one where I just literally was like, I don't even know if I want to do this yet. So I'm just going to roll with what I got. Um, And then I was so sore the day after the tryout, my body was wrecked. Um, (laughs) It was was intense. Um, But going into this season though like once i knew i made the team it was like all right i'm gonna hit the gym because i gotta get my legs ready especially as a baseball player you gotta have some legs under you so i started doing a lot of exercises that i hate like rear foot elevated split squats and all that stuff um but uh yeah i hit the gym hard and uh i also started doing some sprint intervals because um the truth is i hadn't done any max effort sprints in a long time so yeah, part of it was getting my body right. And then part of it was also getting my mind right. Like I do a lot of visualization. And so I would do a lot of, you know, yoga and stretching and stuff like that while also visualizing, um, you know, reps, whether it's taking batting practice, whether it's reps in the game, whether it's throwing the ball from shortstop right at the guy's chest. Um, I would start visualizing all those things, getting my mind right. Um, I have watched a lot of banana ball games to like be familiar with the rules and make sure I was up to date with all that stuff. But just every, you know, and every situation is going to be different with what you need to prepare. Um, 
But just taking the time to go above and beyond and do some preparation already puts you ahead of most people. Yeah, I can't lie. I couldn't tell you the last time I had a tryout. <laughs> you know, it's been over 20 years. So I really can't tell you like what I did to prepare for anything back then. So Especially I, now, I don't the know game, why. game's a little different now than it was, you know. In, I mean, it doesn't have to be baseball. There's the always 90s. something. Like, there's you, you're into bowling. You're into golf. You're into... Um... Well, I suck at both. <laughs> but, so, actually, I don't, I don't suck at bowling. So I'm going to give you my thing, like, especially, you know, as football. So like football was big for us in school. Um, and, you know, I moved my sophomore year to a different school. And when I was went from a, a really large military school, pretty much, I had, you know, three or 400 kids in each in the grades. Um, and then I went to like a 90 to 120 person class. So like when you think about doing that, you think things are going to be easier for you, but there's already a, a family bond at that point in time with these kids that have played together coming up. So like if you transfer schools and you go to a new school and you're not prepping yourself to prepare yourself to compete and out compete the people that have been on that field and playing together their whole lives, like you have at the previous place, you know, you're, you're shorting yourself. So you know, I was extremely nervous. I was a very athletic kid at that age. I probably was very raw, but I thought I was amazing type of deal because I had that confidence, I think, that you really, really need to be an athlete. Um, did I really deserve to have that confidence at that age? Probably not. But I think, you know, all good athletes truly have, like, a little bit of cocky swagger or a little bit of confidence behind them because if you don't, you're, you're shorting yourself and you're you're always comparing yourself to the next person that you're competing against. So what I used to do was literally just like look at every person on the field and I would try and figure out what their weakness was and I would try and beat them at their weakness. So if, if we were running routes and I seen somebody that cut a slant short or cut a slant long, I would picture that in my head and I would fix it and I would do it myself better. Um, and I would do what you said, Brack, is like visualize, right? Like I'm visualizing the ability to do things the right way. That way when I'm in game time or I'm in practice time or trial time, I'm visualized to the point where I already have done it a hundred times. And like, I think that's extremely important in baseball and softball because like the more you get up to the plate, the more swings you take. So like I see swing reality um, and I actually kind of am a huge fan of that. I've never actually utilized it, but just the thought and the process of it, because it allows you to kind of get that timing, right? Right. Like you're getting your rhythm and your routine kind of down in the box. You might not be actually hitting a live baseball, but you're seeing a ball come in at whatever speed you want it to come in at. So to me, um, as, as a former youth coach, anyway, when I was watching tryouts, especially at the little league age, I wasn't really looking at like how good this kid is. I was looking at how good the kid could be um, looking at that raw talent. Like, are you running on and off the field? Are you sprinting to your positions? Are you picking your team up? Like, are you a good player? Um, like, are you more of a good teammate? Like, can you actually step up in on this field that I'm getting ready to put you on? And can you mesh well with the other kids that we're putting you on? Um, so I think a lot of it has to go with not only men, you know, physically preparing, like you can be a hundred percent physically prepared for any trial that you go to, but if you're not mentally prepared for that tryout and you're comparing yourself or you don't have the confidence behind you to think, you know, there might be a previous year where you sat the majority of the year on that same team, but you're going to try out again for year two. You know, that's in the back of your mind. Like, am I good enough to compete at this level? Because last year I wasn't, or apparently that's what they told me I wasn't. Whether you were or weren't, that's a whole nother ball game. You got to wash that all away. You know, we always used to say, like, flush the toilet, like flush it, you know, hit that lever, flush that toilet and move on. Like if you get up there and, and you have a bat at bat, you know, your first round of BP, you're flushing it, you're moving on, you're getting it next time. You know, a lot of kids, especially at the youth level, like I used to watch some of our best hitters in the world. I always knew how their tournament was going to go by their first at bat. They'd get up to bat, and if they struck out, it was – that was it. Yeah. That was it. The tournament was over for them, right? Because they couldn't bring themselves out of that, whether they had 100% – 100% ready to play that tournament. They were probably the best kid on that field, but once you struck, once they struck out, they couldn't get themselves out of it. 
And, you know, it's hard at the youth age to be able to tell a kid, hey, man, that doesn't even matter. Like, it's just one at bat. It's just one at bat. Like, they're thinking about all their friends and what they're thinking about them. Like, yeah. you know, they want to be the guy on the field, and they are the guy on the field. But if you're not mentally the guy on the field, you will not be – Anything on the field. Well, that's why so. baseball is most important is your your mental game has to be just as good as your physical game. Because, like everybody says, baseball is a game of failure. So if you can't fail correctly and you can't handle failure, then you've already, you've already lost. Yeah. Like, you have to learn how to take defeat. Because you're going to get defeated eight out of ten times in baseball, but it's the two times that matter yeah. that count for when, you, when they need you. So – I experienced this firsthand. I mean, even this past week, it's like, uh, and <laughs> I, I'm going to make a video on this. I'm, I have to wait until, um, the bananas are going to release the video and they want to do something with it. And then after that, I'll be able to do some stuff. But, um, but when that happens though, like I'm going to talk about my mentality going into that at bat. Cause even on a much smaller scale, again, I'm already on the team and all this stuff, but like I'm batting low in the lineup and I didn't get my first at bat in this game until, you know, the ninth or the 10th inning, we were playing like 14. <laughs> I didn't get my first at bat till the 10th inning. And in that at bat, I struck out swinging. And, you know, this is my second scrimmage. My first scrimmage, I did okay. I didn't really do that great. And then this one, my very first at bat out the gate, I strike out and I'm already at the bottom of the lineup. And so in my head, I'm like, dang it. Like, I, I don't know if these coaches are going to think that I'm good. I don't know if I'm going to have a starting spot, even though like I'm one of the more notable players. And, you know, all those thoughts go through my head. And I, and I remember thinking at that moment, I was like, man, this is what kids are going through every day and they don't have the, you know, experience that I have. I'm like, man, that's tough. Like it's hard for me now, you know, as a, as a grown man. Um, and I'm still thinking these things like, ah, I got do the coaches think I could play. Um, and I remember I, I, before going to the field that day, I had written down on my phone kind of my mental approach for that day. And one of the things I wrote down was like a big dog mentality, you know, like whether or not, well, regardless of how I do in my previous at bat, I step into the box and like, I am the one, uh, like I I'm the best in the world. When I step into the box, it doesn't matter what happened in the previous at bat. When I step into the box, I am the aggressor. I'm not, I'm not the, the prey, you know, like, and so that was my mentality. And I had to remind myself of that when I was on deck, I was like, okay, yeah, you just, you know, you didn't do what you wanted to in the previous at bat. You just struck out your, you know, one for six or whatever in your first at bats. You're at the bottom of the lineup. All that is true. But deep down, I know that I'm capable of being a really good ball player. And uh, I, I think that when I'm at my best, I believe no one can beat me. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to step up into the box. And I'm going to, I was like, I had two options. Either one, I can change my approach and try to just put the ball in place so I don't strike out again. Or I can stick with my approach and hunt a fastball and go get something that I like. And um, so I went up to the plate and with an aggressive mentality and was like, if I strike out again, I'm going to strike out aggressively. I'm not going to um, be defensive at the plate. And um, he ended up throwing me fastball and then a changeup that he happened to just leave up. And I sat on it and got all of it um, and hit a home run. And the next day I find myself top of the lineup. So it's uh, again, like I'm older now and I'm able to flick that switch mentally and be like, um, you know, and maintain a confidence, even when it doesn't feel like I should have it. Um, but the amount of years it took me to get to that place mentally, um, it's, it's, I'm still like, I'm still getting there. It's way easier said than done. As, as you grow up, you start to kind of get the wisdom that, you know, everybody talks about all the time and, and having the ability to kind of step back and see things from a different perspective, um, whether that be your anger um, or, you know, you're, fr you know, you're quick to react instead of being quick to react. We sit back and think about something for a day, you know, and it's taken me, I'm 36 years old now. And I think two years ago, I probably didn't understand how to kind of step back and react. And I would react towards, you know, certain situations in the business, just to headbangers, you know, and kind of react to a point where it was, first of all, immature. Um, and second, probably, you know, What's the word I'm looking for? No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, I mean, he he has an he has an alter ego. I have an alter ego, um, or the I Red had Hulk. a alter ego, the Red right? Hulk. Um, and it, it was something that I had to control as as you get older, and as you get older, you start to think about the things that you can control and can't control. Um, and you know, we talk about all the time controlling the controllables. And when you're at the plate, or you know, you're having a bat at bat. If I could go back now. 
and picture myself as a 16 year old kid in a plate or at the in the box and i can say hey listen man this isn't the end of the world you struck out one time let's go back out there make our adjustment and react to what's to come ahead of us instead of you know, thinking about striking out the last at bat, like you said, you know, you took a, a different approach. You went back up there with that big dog mentality. The first at bat could have ended as a home run, but you miss it by a half an inch, you know, and then you go back up there and you catch it on the barrel. And all of a sudden you're back at the top of the lineup, like things change that quick. Right. So like you can in life in general, as an adult, you, you realize that there's a big picture and everything isn't so big. And as a teenager, or as a youth kid, or even in college, like things seem so big and they really just aren't. Like I remember getting grounded all the time and going, ah, it's the end of the world. Like I can't go outside. I can't play with my friends. I can't play video games. And you know, that's, it's like two days. But for those two days, it's like all you're doing is sitting in your room, not doing anything. So it, everything at the younger age seems so much bigger than it truly is. And as you get older and you start to kind of get wiser, you know, I think the best players in the world, do you think like the Mac, you know, I'm saying the up and coming guys, and I'm not talking about the Harpers and, you know, the Trouts and the Shohei's and all that stuff. I'm talking like the Max Clarks of the world, the kids coming up, they have that ability early to be able to say, you know what, this isn't a huge deal. I struck out, I'm going to step in the box, I'm going to get back to my approach and I'm going to do well. Or I made an error in the infield, guess what? Everybody makes errors, right? So, like, it's not a huge deal. Come back, find a way to fix it, and, you know, work at it after the game. Um, but those guys have, like, a different approach and a different mentality, I think, than a lot of people, especially at the youth age. Um you know, and if we could use some of the wisdom that we have as older people to kind of guide those kids properly, you know, I, I think that they'll understand it, but they're still not going to truly understand it until they have the experience to say that this happened. And then, you know what, guess what? It wasn't a huge deal. I'm back on it. So, I mean, is, is there a time like kind of when, what is the proper? I know I'm just ranting and I can't help it. Obviously, there's some stuff here, but um like going into a tryout and having the tryout, you get cut. What is your first move? Like, what would you do, Rack? If you come out, you get cut. What What are you doing first? First of all, I think that there's there's two two types of knowledge. There is head knowledge and there's heart knowledge. And it's like you can understand something up here, but if you don't understand something in here, um, then it's going to be really hard to live it out. So, for instance, for me, like intellectually, I know that one tryout or I know that uh, one at bat or one game isn't going to make that big of a difference in the grand scheme of my entire career. Um, but in getting me to believe it in here is really difficult. And so it's going to weigh heavy on me, even though up here, I know it's not that big of a deal. And so I think for me, I would as much as I can try to behave uh, rationally and, and think of the big picture instead of getting caught up into the, into the moments. And if I had just say, you know, not made a tryout, um, I would immediately use that as what I call workout fuel. Like whenever someone would pass over me, whenever I would struggle in a game, uh, whenever I would be belittled, whatever it was, um, I would be like, you know what, I'm going to write this down and I'm going to remember it. Um, so that when I'm working out in the gym, I, and I need a little extra motivation, be like, oh, well, these people thought that I couldn't do it. Um, all right, I'm going to work out that much harder today. So, um, Use it as workout fuel and just, gosh, remember that um, baseball is a marathon. Another thing is like sometimes for some kids, it's necessary to um, explore other options when it comes to schools. Like I do know that there are some coaches out there who just uh, won't change their mind about a player. And this is actually something I was talking with um, some teammates about the other day that they've all like most of us have experienced um, a coach. Oftentimes, it, unless they are very elite. Most coaches will hold this first impression image of who you are as a player and it never leaves them. It doesn't matter how much of a, like as a player, how much you develop, some coaches just will never change their first perception of who you are. And so I saw this in college time and time again, there would be a player who maybe tore it up at some tryout or game where a, a coach went to go visit them. 
And when they got to college, they actually weren't, you know, they just happened to have a good game when the coach saw them, but that was the first impression that the coach had. And so they kept giving them opportunity after opportunity, even though maybe they didn't earn that. Um, and on the same, at the same time, I saw the flip side of that, where there were maybe some players who were studs and really deserved to play. But the first time the coach saw them, uh, they struggled or this or that. And um, so the coach, like immature coaches will often hold a perception of a player and, and that rarely will change. And so um, there are times where it makes sense for players to explore different options so that they don't have to be stuck with the same coach. Of course, that's not always the case, but um, that is something that, that I have seen, though. See, I would be really petty. I'd go to the local mall. I'd get a shirt made that says, I'll be your biggest regret, and I would wear it around school. <laughs> for like a month. For like, I absolutely love For that. like a month. <laughs> You know, and that's kind of the thing, like you hear, you know, um, the kid I'm actually specifically talking about here, like, you know, the, after everything was said and done, he went, spoke to the coach, the coach told him, hey, you know, um, you could pretty much start at every other team, um, you know, but right now this isn't the fit for us uh, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, we're, are we, we're, we're talking about high school baseball, right? We're talking about high school baseball. High, high school baseball. Right, I'm just making sure. Um, you know, yeah. and <laughs> listen, man, I, you know, everything kind of, I get it, like, as a coach, because, you know, there are some kids that I didn't put in positions to succeed that I probably, like, after they developed and after they grew and they left, you know, my program or our program, um, you know, they turned into great pitchers or they turned into great catchers or they turned into fantastic outfielders and good hitters because he had opportunities and they worked and worked and worked. And there's also kids that I did the same t thing to where I thought they were – a fantastic player at say middle infield. Um, and then, you know, we get into tournament play or, you know, you're in that little league kind of like, yes, we're talking about little league people. Um, but we're, you know, we're work, working on like little league all-stars and like it's error after error after error. Well, as a coach, you have to make an adjustment, right? Like yeah. you have to say, Hey man, this just isn't working out and we need to put you in a different position where maybe you can succeed or, Hey, you know what? This kid came off the bench and he hit a game winning double you know, this kid came off the bench and hit another game winning double the next game. And somehow he's back on the bench again. Well, what are, what are we doing? Right? Like, I mean, if you're looking at it from an outside perspective and you're really noticing your players and you're developing those players, if you see a kid that has the ability to come in with, you know, the bottom of the seventh inning and, and have a walk off for you consistently, you might have something there. You might. So maybe we should keep our eyes open and keep watching those players that are coming up through our system instead of telling them, you know what, maybe we don't have a position here for you. Well, I'm hoping, you know, in the end, obviously, this kid busts his ass and gets to the point where he has to be and he works really hard at what he wants to do because the talent is 100% there. It's what you can do with that talent and how you can actually put it on the field because you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't, you're not mentally prepared and you don't have that fire burning in you and you don't have that confidence on the field, you are not going to be a good player. I hate to tell you guys this. You can be the best hitter in the world. If you get up there and can't hit a curveball, you're not a good hitter. If you, you know, you could be the best infielder in the world, but if you have bottom of the ninth inning and you have the yippy type of mentality and you're up there and, you know, you get a ball hit to you and you overthrow first base and, and lose the game, that could ruin your entire career because you can't get over it in your head. And again, it's the big picture and understand that it's not the end of the world. Push yourself harder, work harder and, and, you know, work on the things that people are asking you to work on and then go back out next year, prove them wrong. Like, I think that's the, to me, that's the mentality. And that's what I would do. You know, we've been told that we'll never succeed. When I left the previous company I was working at to come, you know, Mike and, and Ken brought us on and, you know, they pushed and pushed and pushed like, this is going to be better. We're going to do this. And you know how many people told me that I was stupid for coming here? Uh, I mean, hundreds, you know, hundreds and, and people look that, at him now and people that really I respected. Right. Like they're like, this is not a good idea. You know, I left a, a very good six figure pay job that I could have been sitting around in a cushy office all day, not doing anything to come and take a risk at doing what I'm doing now and deal with me daily. <laughs> and it's it pays off, man. So, like, take those chances, take those risks, work your ass off and get to the point and prove people wrong, man. That's all we're going to say to you. Um, I know, you know, Rack, you're kind of on a time crunch today. Um, is there anything that you want to, you guys want to leave off on? I mean, this is going to be a short one here, but we just wanted to rant, kind of have a conversation about this and, and see where it went. Yeah, no, it's good stuff, dude. Like always bet on yourself is, you know, something that I've heard and, and something I like to say to myself a lot, like, 
like bet on yourself if you're going to bet on anything because you can control that's something you could control you know like um for me like there were plenty of times virtually up until the moment that I got signed, I felt like there was virtually no chance of me getting signed. I'm like, I'm coming from a division two school. I'm a late bloomer. Um, I am a position player. I uh, got my junior year taken away. So now I'm a senior. Um, the draft was shortened to 20 rounds. It's like, I had so many things stacked against me. I genuinely did not think that there was a chance that I could uh, actually pr play pro ball, but I kept training as if, it was a reality. And that's the thing, the people that are super successful, they have to be a little bit delusional um, because for you to do things that other people don't do, um, you have to really believe, have a, have a deeper belief in yourself. And so that's where, yeah, I mean, shoot, my encouragement to anybody, you know, not just a, not just a high schooler or college player who's going through it. Like, I mean, yeah, my, my encouragement is like bet on yourself and, uh, you like every single person is going to experience failure. Um, but that, that doesn't, how you, however much you experience failure doesn't make you a winner or a loser. It's how you respond to failure that determines whether you're a winner or a loser. And that's where, uh, baseball is just such a good opportunity. Um, not just as a game, but as something that prepares you for life, because, uh, obviously in life, you're going to have so many, um, so many things that, uh, don't go your way. And if you can, in the game of baseball, start to learn some of those lessons, learn like ways to, to bounce back, even when you fail, uh, it's going to serve you well in life. And I feel like, Chris, what you were saying about, you know, your whole work thing, like I've experienced the same thing. It's like, all right, I, I got cut now from the nationals. Now, what do I do? It's like either I can pout about it or and go do something I don't want to do, or I can take a risk and do something I enjoy doing and feel like I'm gifted at and run with it and see where it goes. And um, so, yeah, bet, bet on yourself and um, be willing to put in the work. And, um, I guess, yeah, for, for anyone out there who's coming up on, cause I mean, again, season's coming up soon, uh, for baseball, like just remember it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, if you want to play this game at a high level, so keep putting in the work every single day. It doesn't feel like you're making any progress on a day-to-day -day basis. Even today, as I'm practicing and working on things every single day, like I'm, I'm practicing trick plays and I'm working on my hitting I'm doing a bunch of stuff I've never done before on a baseball field. And I will say on the day-to-day -day basis, it doesn't feel like I'm getting any better, but I look back even two weeks ago at the where, where I was defensively, you know, doing trick plays and stuff. And I look to where I'm at today and I'm like, huh, I've made a little bit of progress. So again, it's the same stuff we always talk about that focus on the process over, over the results. Um, and always bet on yourself. I will say that you're really bad at the game of pig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I watched your video and Dalton waxed you. Especially trick play pig, bro. Dude, it wasn't even close, man. Dalton waxed you. <laughs> you were the corkster. You look, you look so, like, odd. Like, he bounced behind his back. The ball was, like, way over there. Dalton's all smooth. He's just doing this, flipping it behind his back, tossing it. I don't know how he does that. If you get cut, you know, don't, don't be afraid to get a little petty in you because that petty gives you some swagger to come back and prove mm -hmm. somebody wrong. Definitely bring some petty out. I don't know exactly who you're talking about, Chris, but we're going to find this guy and we're going to send him some horse blinders because apparently he can't look past anything else. So you might as well give him, this, give him the toys. We're not going to do that. And we're going to – I think you know, we should. I think things need to be respectful all the way across the board, you know, and, and those of you that do get cut or if you do end up getting cut, you know, take yourself um, – Take a minute, go sit down with the coach, have a conversation, you know, see if he's willing to actually talk to you and explain to you why you were cut and then take what he's giving you and work your ass off towards it. And then next year you come out and, you know, it, those excuses don't become excuses anymore and they become more of a, a reality. Like this is what I worked on all year. I made sure I took the time to develop myself into the proper player. You know, I want to be a part of your system. What can I do to better myself? And then, once you get on the team, it's what you do when you're on the team that really counts. You know, work your ass off, be a teammate, be a team leader, um, you know, be be the guy that people look up to, not only especially as a student athlete. Guys, don't ever forget student comes first. Right. So make sure your grades are right. Make sure you're eating healthy. Make sure you're waking up in the morning, taking care of your body, getting rest at nighttime. And then go work your ass off outside of that because if you do get cut off a team, you have the time that you should have been at practice or what you would have already put to the side. Um, and knowing that you have practice every single night to go to the gym, 
go take some fly balls, ground balls, work on your pitching, work on your hitting, whatever it may be, and turn yourself into the man that you truly want to become or the woman that you really want to become and bust your ass to prove people wrong. And I agree with the petty comment. I think that was that, that's one of the best things I've heard, um, you know, is, is be petty. You know, go show people who you are instead of, um, and there goes my camera again. Um, go, <laughs> go show people who you are and work on yourself. Um, you know, I know rack, you got to go. I'm not going to keep ranting about the same things here. Um, but you know, long story short, a, uh, you make the team, congratulations, you know, work your ass off, keep going. If you, you don't make the team, um, take yourself to another level and, and teach yourself to become a better person all the way across the board. So, uh, Mike, since my camera's not going, you want to do this real quick for me? Brand new. Brand new. 2024. Easton. Ghost Advance. Double barrel. <laughs> By the time this video releases on Friday. They'll be sold out. Um, <laughs> no, they won't because Friday is first showtime, which is why we're actually show. Actually, it's tomorrow. So this bat is actually going to be available on February 8th at headbangersports.com. Um, don't forget, you can save up to 10% on select. You go ahead and say it because right now my uh, camera's select not working. Select products. I was actually, this is the first time I'm actually like looking at it. It's actually a nice looking bat. It's amazing. Got it's some there, bud. Got some specs in there. It's like a a matte paint finish with like some silver flake, some chrome red. It's pretty dope looking. And of course, it's a ghost, so you know it's going to be the best of the best. Rack, anything you got to say to the people before we roll out of here? No, nah, man. I think we covered it, dude. I think, uh, yeah, I enjoyed that episode. I think it's good advice, and sometimes, it, you know, advice I need to hear even because, it's again, like, <laughs> you know, no matter how much you hear this stuff, you got to hear it all the time, dude, because it's it's the truth. And and our our bent as you know, our human nature is to just, uh, um, yeah, isn't always in the right place. And so, yeah, hearing that stuff reiterated, I think is is good to hear. You know, whether you're playing or not playing right now. So I'm all about that, and I I think that's. Uh... Something you can tell every person at every age, you can always develop yourself and grow yourself as a person. So take whatever people are telling you and work your ass off towards it. That's that's my advice to you. Um, Looks like there's a, a pony outside of a uh, rack's window. Yeah, is that is it is it the Fortnite pony? There it is. I'm gonna ride that around the bases when I leave the yard again. Again, guys, uh, Ghost Advance 2024 model is releasing on uh, February 8th at HeadbangerSports.com. Um, since we have Rack on here, we can say, you know, you can save 10% on select Easton and Rawlings and some other really, really, really good products by using code CRUISE23 at checkout at headbangersports.com. Um, we appreciate you guys for tuning in again. Um, until next week, uh, work your asses off, boys and girls out there. But don't quit. And um, always believe in yourself. I agree. Be bet, petty. Be petty. Bet on yourself and go kick ass.